Hardly any other component has shaped the automation industry as much as the Programmable Logic Control, or PLC. For about five decades now, it has been controlling and regulating various processes, whether in industrial manufacturing, building services, transportation, etc. In this video, you will get an introduction to this technology. Stay tuned. PLCs range from small, non-modular devices used for processing simple binary signals up to large rack-mounted modular devices which can perform analog processing, PID control, motor control, networking, and more. Here, we will have a closer look at the bigger modular PLC. A modular PLC consists of several modules and can be individually adapted to the desired application. The assemblies are mounted on a so-called rack according to fixed rules. The power supply module is placed on the left, followed by the central processing unit or CPU and the input and output cards. Depending on the application, further modules such as communication panels or motor control are arranged on the right. The mounting locations, i.e. slots, are numbered from left to right in increasing order. The CPU represents the central module, which executes the user program. It reads the signal states of the input module, executes the logic operations of the user program, and controls the outputs. The operating system that controls these operations is stored in the read-only memory. The user program, as well as current counters and time values, are stored in the RAM, if not stored on a memory card. Signal modules form the interfaces between the CPU and the outside world. The input and output modules are galvanically isolated via optocouplers to protect the CPU against voltage peaks and short circuits. The data transfer between CPU and signal modules takes place via a system bus, classified as parallel, which is located at the rear of the PLC. For special requirements, the PLC can be extended with particular modules, which fulfill time-critical and computation-intensive tasks. Examples would be a communication processor, modules for controlling drives, etc. As you see, the PLC nowadays is more than just a substitution for a relay control. To ensure that the PLC will control the machine in a safe manner, you should know as an engineer how a PLC works. First, the CPU takes a snapshot from the signal states of the sensors and switches and saves this information in data table in the form of a bit pattern. Afterward, the CPU executes the instructions of the program, one instruction at a time and one after the other. Once the program has been processed, the outputs must be switched on or off. We can say that now a bit pattern is sent to the output module. Of course, this process must be repeated continuously as long as the PLC is in the run mode. In this context, Two terms describe the speed of the PLC. The program execution time is the time required by the PLC for a single execution of the program. The total response time taken by the PLC to read the inputs, solve the logic, and write the outputs is called the PLC scan time. Consider that a big user program will increase this time. Take both times into account if you have to plan control with a PLC especially for time-critical tasks. This was a smooth introduction to this technology. For more information about PLCs, you can access our webpage. If you want to be updated about new videos, please subscribe to our channel.